With that said, let's jump into something that's a little bit difficult, but a little bit inspiring at the same time with this. I didn't expect to wake up yesterday to the news that the senator from the 22nd district had overnight accused me by name of grooming and sexualizing children in an email fundraising for herself. So I sat on it for a while wondering why me? And then I realized, because I am the biggest threat to your hollow, hateful scheme. Because you can't claim that you are targeting marginalized kids in the name of, quote, parental rights if another parent is standing up to say no. That is uh, Michigan State Senator uh, Mallory McMorrow, who has gone viral for her uh, harsh reaction, justified 100% against Lana Theus candidate for state senate as well, who put out this statement. You're gonna see this is like a fundraising thing. And it's all just the the everybody who disagrees with me is a groomer stuff. Apologies if you can't read the text, but identifies in that these are the people we're up against. Progressive social media trolls like Mallory McMorrow, who aren't outraged they can't teach, can't groom and sexualize kindergartners, or that eight year olds are responsible for slavery. It's all insane, conspiratorial, QAnon nonsense. And as someone who's been so frustrated by this spreading, it feels great to have someone responding to it. And to that end, we're gonna give you more of what Mallory McMorrow had to say. So who am I? I am a straight, white, Christian, married, suburban mom who knows that the very notion that learning about slavery or redlining or systemic racism somehow means that children are being taught to feel bad or hate themselves because they are white is absolute nonsense. No child alive today is responsible for slavery. No one in this room is responsible for slavery. But each and every single one of us bears responsibility for writing the next chapter of history. Each and every single one of us decides what happens next and how we respond to history and the world around us. People who are different are not the reason that our roads are in bad shape after decades of disinvestment or that healthcare costs are too high or that teachers are leaving the profession. I want every child in this state to feel seen, heard, and supported, not marginalized and targeted because they are not straight, white, and Christian. We cannot let hateful people tell you otherwise to scapegoat and deflect from the fact that they are not doing anything to fix the real issues that impact people's lives. And I know that hate will only win if people like me stand by and let it happen. I've rarely felt as seen by the speech of a state senator there. Uh, identifying what they're doing, the game, why they're doing it, why the Republicans are focusing on this stuff. Uh, Love that there. Adrian, uh, what do you think about this? I'm really glad that she spoke up and she used her privilege and her uh, positioning to fight back, to say something about it because they are using these false uh, just narratives, uh, incorporating this whole you know uh, child molestation, predatory angle, as well as lying about slavery, just so that they can erase the past and also erase the identities of members of the queer community. And it's old and it's pathetic and it's not okay. So I'm really glad that um, she's spoke up and she said something. Yeah, and, and and very specifically there, she was fighting back against this idea, which is very common, which is uh, one side is speaking out for parents to protect kids. And that is there's only one interest that parents have. They all agree with the right on this. Well, no, they don't. And so I'm, I'm glad there that you see her saying, no, I'm, I'm a parent, I have kids, you don't speak for me. No, and also using her privilege as a white woman and saying that is incredibly important. Um, you know, because this narrative that you can't teach children about history uh, because they're going to feel bad as white children, it just, it's, it's a way to avoid a reckoning. It's a way to avoid the reality that our society is not equal, that all of these narratives and um, honestly, these tales that have been told about the world in which we live. That it's not accurate. And so giving children some understanding of where they come from and also where we've all come from in this nation, it's so we can have a better tomorrow so that we don't end up repeating this past. And for that woman to stand up and to say something about it and to say that she supports that knowledge, it goes a long way. 
Yeah, hundred um, percent. And we need to fight back against the side that is, they're terrified of anyone who's lived a life not like theirs. Just that that's been a, a constant throughout their politics for a long time. And they're terrified of their kids learning anything that they don't know, of being curious, of being exposed to other ways of life, not bent into them, forced in nothing like that is happening, will happen, that is insane. But simply knowing that other experiences exist, which I would say that philosophically, kind of a bedrock of school and education. I mean, we could we could just train you like in a very particular job from kindergarten if we wanted to do that. Um, but anyway, look, I want to I want to go into some of the specific. Uh, no, I'm Mallory McMorrow, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I've said it. I've said it. Thank you, producer, for, for fact checking there. No, it, we've said it. Um, I want to go into some of the specific claims that were made because I can't discount the possibility that you might be watching this and not have been following the development of this as like the main strain of American politics. I want to respond to some of the claims that are made by Lana. I'm going to say theist. Some people are saying it might be Tice. I don't really care at this point, honestly. <laughs> said, here's what's happening: gender bending indoctrination, confusing them about their identities. No. Acknowledging that there are other orientations is not suggesting them as things for one to pick up as a hobby. That's not how that works. There's no bending, there's just acknowledging that it exists. By the way, indoctrination works both ways. Forcing ignorance is one way to indoctrinate kids into accepting and favoring the status quo. Indoctrination is not just about what you say, it is also about what you ban from being said. Because again, remember, these are the people that talk about how cancel culture is bad and there is no limit to the things they want to, by law, force teachers from not saying. Exposure to inappropriate sexual content, stealing their innocence. That is perhaps of all of this, and so much of it is misinformation, the most detached from reality. There is no porn being shown. And by the way, in the limited cases where it's even accidentally shown, we profile it. We did on the show yesterday, a teacher accidentally showed some pornography and was immediately fired. That's not what any of this is. Uh, saying that gay people exist is no more sexual or pornographic than acknowledging that straight people exist. Education about orientation is not about how to transition from one sexual position to another. That's not how that works. And I shouldn't have to point that out. Everybody knows that. But again, in all of these cases, one of the through lines is they know on some level that what they're arguing against just isn't scary enough to produce a mass movement. That's why they have to lie about it. And finally, race-based education, critical race theory, pitting children against each other. Adrian, as we've talked about so many times, that is just not what any of that is about. Nope, not at all. No, but a lot of these right wingers are trying to avoid that level of introspection, that level of actually being able to pay attention to the lives of individuals around you and realizing that the status quo that's been established is not because so and so is better or working harder. It'll undermine their entire, um, their whole theory of having it to be a meritorious society. And if you just work hard, things will work out for you. Uh, no, it's just these people don't want to face reality and they don't want to make room for other people and acknowledging difference. This is something that unfortunately, it is that making America great again, 1940s, 50 mentality. It's yeah. not good, it's not gonna work. No, and um, finally, I wanna go into this. Uh, Lana Tice, Theus, Tees, don't care, did not respond to her colleague's speech on the Senate floor and a representative did not immediately reply to a request for comment. Because honestly, why would you? Why would you? You send out the fundraising thing, you uh, lie, about a million different things. You make specific claims asserting that a state senator is a pedophile. You have no evidence for it. You don't require evidence for it. Why would you, when the targets of your fundraising appeal, what are they gonna have follow up questions? Are they gonna be Googling, wait, is there robust evidence that Mallory McMorrow is grooming people? No, they don't care. The I do my own research people have one thing in common across all of them. They don't do any research and the people <laughs> making these appeals Understand that. Why respond? You, th this is what politics is. Make insane conspiratorial claims and know that the people you're talking to are even more ignorant than you. They will never fact check it. There will never be any consequences for it. She might well win this race. That's my fear at this point. Any final thoughts, Adrian? 
No, I agree with you. I fear it as well because I just think that uh, you know the right has really created, or, or actually, I guess, um, galvanized this fear mentality, this fear mindset, this thought that our children are being hypersexualized, our children are being exposed to things they shouldn't be. Uh, also, this thought that there is going to be some kind of change in power when it comes to the racial demographics and how this works. And so people are so incredibly afraid that it does make me think that they are going to vote against their interests. Um, and we've seen it happen time and time again. And that's the thing is they're keeping people ignorant and they're keeping people afraid and it's gonna be the downfall for us all. Exactly, no, you're you're 100 percent right. These are just, these are people predisposed psychologically to be terrified who are terrified and they consume hours of content every day designed to make them even more terrified. That's not good for democracy. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.